Here we are back again on the Brewers March to October episode 6 today and we're at 59 games through the season so there's a chance that by the end of this episode we'll be right at about halfway through the season. And I'd say after the start we got off to, we're in a pretty decent spot. I mean, I started out, it was like, it was like, what, 3 and 15 or something like that? It was real bad. So we've definitely turned things around in the last couple episodes. 32 and 27 is our record now. In terms of projected wins, we're projected for second place in the division now. But that's not good enough. Still seven games back in terms of projection from the Cardinals. But also, we still need to gain some ground in the wild wild card race for our projected wins to give us a wild card spot. Now before we really get started here, I feel like I have something I should mention. A little while back I brought up the uh, possibility of live streaming some March to October. People seem to be pretty into that idea, w which was actually pretty cool because I, I was not sure how that would go over, you know, the thought of me live streaming. But I kind of hate to say it, I think I'm going to put that on the back burner for now. Just for now, I, I don't want to commit to any anything one way or another but at least for the next week or two i think i'm just gonna like not worry about live streaming anytime super soon i've got some other things that i'm trying to prioritize and i just think it makes more sense to prioritize these other things before i try to figure out the whole live streaming thing and hopefully if all goes well you guys will know what i'm talking about sooner rather than later but i just figured since i already talked about the live streaming thing and asked you guys for feedback i should probably let you know that as of right now, I'm not planning on starting up live streaming anytime in the super near future. But anyways, with that out of the way, we got a fast track to take care of. Now I'm probably not going to spend too much time covering what actually happens in the game, because this guy is a starting pitcher who probably, no matter how good we do with him, isn't going to be brought up to the majors. He's a 25 year old 62 overall with a D potential, tall lefty arm. But based on how things have gone so far this season, it seems like the max that people can improve is 6. So even if I do amazing with him here and he goes up 6 overall, that'll still only be a 68. So he's probably not going to impact the team, but I still figured we might as well do it. But yeah, don't be too shocked if you don't see too much of this game. Alright, here we go. Let's just see what kind of pitch selection he's got. He's only got 3 pitches too. That doesn't bode well for him either. I didn't even notice that when we looked at his card. Oh, we get a strikeout on the high fastball there. All right. Oh, that does get caught. So we get a 1-2-3 inning to start. All right, that's a good that's a good start for this guy here. Even if we don't bring him up, I'll never be against guys in our system getting better cuz they could always be used in a trade, hopefully. All right, there's going to be the first hit allowed. So no no hitter for him. That grounder to short. All right, he's through two now on just about 20 pitches. Oh, blew it past him. Wow. Ah, that was a pretty hard hit ball down the line there. That's kind of the first good hit they've had so far. I think, yeah, we got out of that inning after the leadoff double. No runs allowed still. Pretty, pretty good performance intact. I think he's got five strikeouts also. So if that's caught, which is looking like it'll be, that's three straight flyouts. Pop flies in the fifth. There we go. All right. If this play's made, all right, that's six pretty strong innings from Perdomo here. He's going to start uh, getting into the yellow here soon, though, so it'll be interesting to see how much they leave him in. But I guess judging by our Bowden Francis debut, as long as we keep it scoreless, we might just stay in the game until it's over. And another strikeout. That's eight strikeouts here through seven. No runs allowed, only the three hits, no walks. Look guys, I gotta be honest here. Normally, when I record, I turn my fan off or turn it down. I am getting real hot. I, got, I gotta turn, it's only been 20 minutes and I'm sweating. I gotta turn this fan back up. So if you can hear it and the audio gets a, a little slightly worse, just know that it's worth it. It's not a good start here. Man, and we get out of another inning with a leadoff double. 
And just like that, we're going for a complete game shutout here, assuming they leave me in for the ninth. Yeah, here we go. Oh, they're going to make it tough. Brian Goodwin with the base hit. Oh, and they're going to... Oh, no, he does get there. Okay, I thought that was a cheapy hit. That one's going to get down, though. That's a cheapy. This guy has three hits. Lefty, lefty. This is Sammy Siani. I think he's gone oppo all three times also. Oh, don't do it. Okay, we get there. It's not as clean as I would have hoped in the ninth, but we finish off the complete game shutout. Just about as good as you can hope to do in a situation like this. A player lock fast track opportunity. So we get the one plus, which is the max you can get. You can only get either a plus or no plus in these. But then we get a momentum flame ball here. And now we'll have to see what he's become here. I wonder if it'll do any simulating at all. Oh, it will. Okay. I wasn't sure if it actually would. I kind of want to just not sim, though. Okay, we, we did pick up three wins and only a little one loss, so that's fine. So, dang, it didn't even ask me if I wanted to call him up. What? Huh. I kind of thought that was just standard with the fast tracks, is after you do it, it asks you if you want to call him up. But maybe it just reads the situation and, and recognizes that he wouldn't or he he's not a higher overall than anybody on the team so it doesn't even bother but yeah he kind of did exactly what i expected out of a good performance like that plus six overall becomes a 68 still wouldn't have a spot on the team but i could i could see him if we had no other option after using him i could see him being a decent reliever now something i completely forgot to mention at the start after we made that trade got rid of jackie bradley jr and it added andrew chafin the game messed with our uh, our lineups and also made a call up of its own that i didn't really like we called up mark matthias I also just now decided to readjust the trade management screen because I forgot to do that also after we got rid of uh, Jackie Bradley Jr. And actually the more, I should probably go to this screen because the more you look at it, the more we probably are going to need another center fielder. Not even halfway through the season and this is Lorenzo Cain's regression. He is really taking hits here, man. Pretty much the standard is minus four but then to his numbers against lefties it's a minus seven and a minus eight he's not playing bad he's still playing pretty well but man with how this is going i just worry that especially by the end of the season he's gonna be like a 70 so i've adjusted our trade management screen i still have relief pitcher on this but I've changed the uh, team needs here to contact and speed, and I've changed the players to target to no longer include left-handed relief pitchers, because right now as we sit, we have four righties, four lefties, and honestly, everybody's pretty solid at this point. So if we get another like good reliever to pop up in a trade, I might take it, but at this point, I feel like we need that shortstop and now that center fielder more than we need more guys in the bullpen. So the guys I'm targeting might as well go big, right? We got George Springer and Cattell Marte. And I did check the standings before putting them in. I also checked on these two guys who have been on our uh, players to target screen. None of these teams are doing good. The Phillies for Gene Segura are, are in last place in their division. Only nine back, but still last place and behind the Marlins. The Jays also pretty shockingly are 11 games under 500. So I don't know, maybe they'd be looking to flip springer after signing him who knows and then in the nl west kind of unsurprisingly the rockies for story and the diamondbacks for Marte are the two bottom teams in the division so i would say while ambitious all four of these guys are still within the realms of possibility all right so let's finally get into this next game we're down four to three against pittsburgh but we're gonna be starting out with nobody out and a runner on first we got to make this comeback take this game probably get a nice momentum boost oh that's a pitch i gotta hit oh my god are you serious wow i got so many pitches to hit that at bat wow did i really miss that what is going on 
I thought we fixed the hitting in this series. I thought we were destroying the ball now. Oh! Please stay fair. Hang on. No, don't go foul. No, what? I thought I had it. Alright, at least that's a wild pitch. Going to get us to second. Ooh, okay, we did draw the walk. For a second, I thought that got called for a strike. But that brings up Vogel back. This is the guy we want up in this spot. He's he's probably going to hit a home run here and give us the lead. Oh, I just missed that. Man, how did I miss that? And to think, we were, we were 2.3 feet away from having the lead. All right, well, why not? Let's see Andrew Chafin for the first time since making the trade. Hopefully, he was worth it. Hopefully, he doesn't suck. Nice. A four-pitch strike out there because he took one. That is a disgusting slider, though, that he's got. That's going to be some fun. The fastball, he turned on it but got under it, luckily. Nice, and a weak swing on that one. Chafin, he feels kind of good. He feels like I could be pretty good with him. All right, we're going to have to do it against their closer now, Richard Rodriguez. Okay, a leadoff walk. Ooh, that was kind of nasty. All right. Wow. Look at the CPU tunneling their pitches. That fastball low and away, I was going to take it because I thought it was uh, another slider. All right, but Colton Wong was on the bench for this one. So we were able to bring him off the bench here. Hopefully he can keep this game moving along. Ah, uh, no. I can't say Wong would have hit that out if I was all over it, but it's a hanging slider. It could have been a gapper or something. All right, Lorenzo Kane, our last chance. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no, man. He literally, that count, I probably didn't show it. He went down 3-0 and then threw three straight hanging sliders. The first one I took because it was 3-0, the next two, I don't even know. I, it's like I was gearing up to hit an outlier fastball when the fastest he was going to throw was like 94. Man, that that is just a deflating loss there. I feel like that is not a game I should be losing. I don't care how we came into it, especially at this point when like we're on a roll, but we're not, we're not back in it. You know, can't be losing to the pirates like that. Let's see what happens. Oh, here's our, all right. Okay. Wait a second. Wait a second here. This isn't just the call up after the fast track. This is now a call up in the same kind of way that Bowden Francis was a call up. So. My assumption is we would right off the bat get to pitch with him again and potentially bump him up another six overall. Hang on a second here. This is, uh, this could be interesting. Because I think with the boat and Francis one, I got to pick who to send down. So I should be able to do that again. So hey, all right, all right. I said at one point, I don't remember when, but I did say Angel Perdomo could be an interesting bullpen arm. If we bring him up, send down Brett Anderson, and then we get to uh, we get to bump him up to potentially a 74, he'd, he'd probably be better than Brett Anderson out there in the bullpen. You know what? I think I'm going to do this. I think I'm going to do this because I'm I'm trusting the game to actually do what it's telling me it's going to do here and give me another chance with Angel Perdomo to do a player lock and upgrade his attributes. But worst case scenario, even if it doesn't do that, even if it doesn't bump up his attributes, overall wise, he would only be three overall worse than Brett Anderson, but Brett Anderson is struggling. He's got a 550 ERA, giving up 10 homers in just 37 and two thirds innings. So even if we replace him with a guy who's three all overall worse, you know, how much worse can it really get? So I, I think I'm going to do this, man. If you told me at the beginning of this episode that there was a chance that Angel Perdomo would not only get called up, but potentially get up to a 74. All right, let's do this. Let's lock it in, man. I'm, I'm kind of excited. We are going to call up Angel Perdomo, send down Brett Anderson 
and hopefully this actually works out here like I'm thinking it will but there we go our newest player here it's a player lock it says the same thing perform well for a season long player boost but that's the same thing it said for Bode and Francis too. So I'm assuming it's going to work the same way. And man, I'm just going to go ahead and play this in this episode. We just came off a complete game shutout from Angel Perdomo against the Pirates AAA team. So now let's see if he can do it against their Major League team. They're probably not a whole lot better. I'm going to be really excited if this works out the way I'm thinking it will. I don't know if I've ever done a March to October where we've had this many upgrades from the minor leagues. Like, assuming this works out, in the best case scenario, he gets to a 74. We'll have gotten Bowden Francis from out of nowhere up to a 77 now. Tristan Lutz, even though he's not in the bigs he still went from a 62 overall a potential which is kind of eh to a 68 overall a potential which at 21 years old has got to make him a top prospect and now if angel perdomo gets as good as he can get here he'll have gotten a plus 12 attribute boost he'll go from a literal career minor league nobody at 25 years old and a D potential with a 62 overall to probably a pretty solid long relief arm for us. But we actually got to get the job done first. I'm, I'm kind of jumping the gun here. And yeah, he's, he's having a little accuracy trouble. That play has got to be made, man. After an at-bat like that, eight pitches, we got to get the out. Dang, dude, I'm going to be lucky to get five innings out of him at this rate. They are fouling everything off. Well, this sucks. Dude, this honestly could not have gotten off to a worse start. 22 pitches for three batters. And after like a 10 or 11 pitch at bat, we give up a home run to him. Run to first? Where are you going? <laughs> alright, alright. This is going good here. Two ground outs to start. And we get the strikeout. Alright, good bounce back inning there. No. Wait, that wasn't hit as hard as I thought. We should be good. Alright. Oh, that did get down fair. Oh, man. I thought we were back on track here. Oh, but we got bailed. Why does he keep running to the line? Both these times I've had to cover first. He's not running straight to first. That's weird. Man, I'm pretty sure that's the same guy we struck out last time. So we have two strikeouts. Both of them are against him. Alright, and a grounder to short gets us out of another inning here. Still just the one run allowed. There we go. Finally our offense came through. Put up two runs. I'm really getting tired of Key Brian Hayes here, man. Now he's stealing too? And we didn't get it? Why didn't you put the tag down? Oh, we made the play. That's six innings here of one run baseball. That's got to be a big upgrade in itself. Oh my god. Some of these defensive plays though too. I don't want to say we're getting bailed out because some of these hits for them and even these extended at bats are just, they just feel dumb. But at least the game is balancing itself out with these good plays on defense. There's another pretty solid one. <laughs> what? Why is Michael Perez the only guy to strike out? Hey, we get someone in the top half of the order striking out. Ah, uh, yeah, you know what? Why not? I'm down. Let's let's pitch the ninth. Let's complete this game. Oh, we got pinch hit for the one time I actually want to keep going. But no, that makes sense. They had two, three, four coming up. And we get the win. That's pretty important. Stellar pitching performance. We get the three plus. Didn't have to be a complete game shutout. We still get it. Now, now the real test is what kind of attribute boost did we get? All right, I'm hoping for a quick turnaround in games here because that is not much momentum at all. We're going to get one win out of that maybe. 
and there it is <laughs> All right, we still sweep the Reds, and now we're taking it to Colorado, and here's another trade that's not the guy from Colorado I want, though, game. Wrong Rocky, although this is not a bad trade at all. First of all, though, we can see from this screen, because we can uh, view the team, and Angel Perdomo, he did get it, man. Plus six attribute boost for the second time of the episode. He's gone up plus 12. He started the episode as a 62 overall D potential, and now he's finishing it as a 74 overall. And he's going to be a solid contributor out of our bullpen. This is just as good, if not maybe better of an arm than what we could have picked up from trading from what I was like looking for with Doolittle or Britain. So yeah, this trade, not bad at all, but I'm eyeing that Phillies one. If that's Segura, that's the trade. This one's going to be Mancini, not... I don't like it. And it's not because Derek Fisher is the guy we'd be giving up. I just don't see Mancini as a huge upgrade. So who's the Phillies one? It is Segura. Oh man, it's Segura. I mean, this is the one. This is the one I'm looking for. The only thing that is making me doubt this is there is part of me that still wanted to hold out hope that I'd be able to get Trevor's story. And I guess also the fact that this Givens trade is also a really good trade. But, you know, looking at it, we already have our good bullpen arms, but we have a chance to get the big upgrade that we're looking for, the big upgrade to our bats. So I think I got to commit to it, man. I think I got to go Segura. And I also, man, I got to I gotta bring this up because a guy in my comments, Binyamin, Binyamin, I don't know how exactly you pronounce it, but man, you do not want me to trade away Bryce Terang. But I, I hate to say it, dude, it doesn't make sense to keep him. He's not going to factor into this March to October. We're not going to continue it into a franchise. If we were, I probably wouldn't trade him here. But the fact of the matter is he's just just not going to provide any value to this March to October team. Kind of like when I made the trade for Eloy Jimenez in the White Sox one. Just with how that season was working out, it wasn't going to give me the chance to call him up. So at that point, he wasn't going to contribute to the team. So I may as well have traded him. And it worked out pretty well because we got Dustin May, who ended up with like a 1.13 ERA. But yeah, we're really not giving up anything that's going to impact our team as it is right now. Everybody's in the minors. So let's go ahead and lock it in, man. Our biggest trade to date, bringing Gene Segura back to Milwaukee. Shouldn't have left in the first place. All right, I'm assuming it's going to be a player lock right away with him. Yep, there it is. Look at him back in the Milwaukee uniform. And wow, our projected wins jumped way up. I'm assuming the trade and maybe the uh, the boost from Perdomo contributed to that more than just the wins them themselves. But we're projected as the division winners right now. I mean, still tied with the Cardinals, but 92 wins is projected to get it done. We've moved all the way to 40 and 29, sitting three and a half back in the division. And we are going to see Gene Segura debut to start the next episode guys this was this was a this was a weird episode because i'm sitting here it's an hour 45 into the recording but i feel like all i really did was pitch with angel perdomo a couple times but that is gonna do it for this episode make sure you hit the like button if you enjoyed this one let me know what you thought of that trade in the comments Lastly, make sure to subscribe to the channel. We're on the long road to a thousand. But anyway, that does it for me. I hope everyone enjoyed. Thank you guys all for watching, and I'll see you next time.